Oh, yeah, got a banner. You see banner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now the banner's good. Sometimes I'm going to I didn't either. Good morning, everyone. Can we sing to our feet this morning? It's Trinity Sunday. So we're going to uh, sing. Holy, 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 Trinity. Holy, 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 and <laughs> Holy, 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 the darkness hide thee, though the sinful you, thy glory may Only thou, Lord, it's not 
Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Sing it with us, Jesus. Jesus, the only one that could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Oh, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and who with your heart and me in your love so Sing with us, Jesus, the name of all Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one that could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. And we sing holy. There is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my heart and sing wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love. Yeah. 
forsaken. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. For those of you at home, you may not know that we have a new band member. Maybe temporary, but maybe permanent. Who knows? We're hoping. Um, Brooke is singing with us. Say what? Do we need to make contributions? He says always. He's, you know, he's going to be moderator, so we got to do what he says, right? So, yes, always, always. New lead singer. <laughs> Um, it, it is just, it is wonderful to see you all when I, uh oh, when I got here, I thought, oh, we're only going to have like, you know, six people. And then when Holy, Holy, Holy came on and I turned and I was like, whoa, there's people here and it's wonderful. Is my mic weird or is it? Okay. All right. All right. It keeps cutting out. I can tell it's cutting out. It is great to be back. Okay. It is great to be back. Um, if you have never been, the Grand Canyon is magnificent. Thank you. Be yeah, another week. What do you think? It's my static. It's my electricity from Sedona. Yeah. Um, anyway, it is great to be back, and I am so thrilled. Chris, thank you for the new banner. That is amazing. I don't know. You all got to see it last week. I obviously am just now seeing it, and it's it's wonderful, thank you. So welcome, welcome to First Christian Church. We are one church in multiple locations as we gather together here in the sanctuary, as we gather on Zoom and on Facebook. Whether we are glad that you are here and we are glad that you have chosen to worship with us today, this holiday weekend, this Trinity Sunday. Um, I was teasing um, when I came in this morning and I said I didn't get to wear red for Pentecost last week, so I'm wearing it today. Um, but I'm so glad that you all are here. So no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, no matter where you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. So welcome home. Ellie, hopefully this will work. Okay. You have faith. There you go. That's good for the elder. Okay. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Will you please join me in the call to worship? In a world filled with violence and war, we gather together to celebrate the promise of peace. In a world filled with tyranny and oppression, we gather together to celebrate the promise of justice for all. In a world filled with hunger and greed, we gather together to celebrate the promise of plenty for all. Our hope is in the name of the Almighty God the creator, redeemer, sustainer of heaven and earth. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, make your presence known to us as we worship this morning. May your name, Jesus our Christ, be praised from the rising of the sun to the midnight hour. And may your name always be honored among us. Spirit of holiness, breathe on us. Breathe on us all and bind us in Christian love and servanthood. O oh God, creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, be known to us today on this Trinity Sunday. Transform our lives and our community 
into the image of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we come to the time in our service where you have the opportunity to come and light a candle. If you are at home, we invite you to light a candle there also. We light this candle symbolizing the prayer and voice inside our hearts. In this sacred moment, we open our hearts to what God has for our lives, our home, and our church body. It is that time in our service where we have an opportunity to share with one another the places, the ways in which we have seen God at work in our lives this week. What about, I have tons, but I'm not going to share them. Um, but what about you all? Does anyone? Yes, Kathy. I have twin sisters, and they live in Melissa, Texas, next door to each other. Yesterday, I got a text from my one sister that says, tornadoes coming our way, we are leaving. And I didn't know what to do. And it actually it was scheduled to hit Melissa, Texas. And it, it said everything like warning, you know, you know, danger. And so... I went and and I called a friend and said to to say prayers for my you know my sisters and then I went and went in my bedroom got on my knees and was praying to God because I was talking to my other sister too because my my one sister and the brother were my brother in law were leaving to, to get out of town and yeah, but they're from California okay my other sister's from California her husband's from Texas and he said. No, we're not leaving, which scared the daylights out of me. But maybe those Texans, you know, they see hurricanes and they lasso them and ride them to the ground. I don't know. But uh, while I was in the middle of prayer, my sister texted me and said, it's north of us. So thank you, God. Yeah, we'll find out today. They said it doesn't look like anything, you know, 
any damage, but it's it was dark. So, but we're just very, very grateful. And I had to tell her the day before yesterday, she had to go out and, and get her bird, take her bird feeder down because of the wing. I said, well, good thing that you had taken it down because it might be in Anna, Texas by now. Ah, as someone from the Midwest, yes, you don't mess with tornadoes, but I am grateful that the power of prayer has been proven again. I thought I saw another hand. Come on, Michelle. Somebody else? Okay. On a fall week, I broke my kneecap and I got all of these stuck in the bones. Now, I walk better now to you. <laughs> so thank God. Yes. Okay, you broke your kneecap, but you have something done and now you can walk better. Yeah. All right, with your brace. Okay. All right. Be careful. Okay. Anybody online, Meg? I think Meg. Is it Meg? Meg yes. is okay. Meg, anybody online? I am not seeing any hands. Okay. Chris? Yeah. So uh, seven years ago now almost, when we bought our house, you know, it's hard to find a house in California. <laughs> but yeah, we found this one and there were several available and um, we just like this particular one for a lot of reasons. Um, as it turns out, our neighbors are Chinese. So I guarantee they are very happy that Tristan is living next door. <laughs> uh, since we've lived there, we've been able to help them uh, replace the roof, fix uh, the side of their building. Uh, last, what, three, four months ago, um, the mom, wife had a stroke. Tristan went to the hospital with them. And then two weeks ago, about the son had a stroke. <laughs> And so Tristan went with them to the hospital. <laughs> and so they're okay, they're doing okay. But I don't know, I feel kind of like God put us there for a reason. <laughs> That's incredible, yes. Hey, Leslie, we do actually have um, one online to share. Great, go ahead. <laughs> well, among other things, um, my father got his first house which I'm su surprised at. And I'm uh, finally able to go back to the movies after four years of being picked up at home. Wow. That is awesome. That is awesome. <sighs> yes. Um, Sign of Life, just want to say thank you to everybody that supported me and sending love and prayers on um, the loss of my dad. Um, my church family is super important to me. So I, I love you guys and appreciate you and uh, everyone else as well. Everybody's been great. So thank you. Amen. All right. Anybody else? All right. Bill. Okay. <laughs> 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 By the way, I'll look for three striped shirts for you guys so you can be the almost Kingston trio. <laughs> In a more serious vein, Memorial Day 2024, a day when America keeps faith with the war dead. When we try to remember, we won't leave you behind. When I joined the Marine Corps and I was standing on the yellow steps being yelled at the first night of boot camp, I think it was about two o'clock in the morning, they made the point, we will never leave you behind. And in times of great stress, it was a relief a small relief to know that no matter what, you wouldn't be left behind. There can be no finer calling than serving one's country. And while sacrifice is inherent 
during a life of service. More than a million service members have made the ultimate sacrifice to protect the freedoms we hold true. Memorial Day is our moment to remember and honor them, our nation's fallen heroes. They are the parents, the children, the spouses, the partners, the siblings, the friends, and the battle buddies. And as Americans, I believe it is our duty to ensure the stories of their lives and bravery are not lost with time. Their stories, their memories, and the impact they had on this great nation live on. For many American families, though, this Memorial Day, there will be a void and emptiness as they lack closure on the death of a loved one who died in service to our country. This void is because there are more than 81,000 of service people who remain missing after World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and the Cold War. A Department of Defense division known as the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency uh, works to find and identify the unaccounted and bring closure to their families. As a result of their meticulous work, on Monday, in a veteran's cemetery in Andersonville, Georgia, an Army corporal named Luther Story will be laid to rest with full military honors. There are two things that will make this service unique. First of all, Cor Corporal Story was awarded posthumously the Medal of Honor, our nation's highest military award for heroism in Korea. Secondly, the most important, but most important, he has been listed as missing in action since December the 1st of 1950. But on Monday, after 73 years, Luther's story will have come home. The family will have closure and he will be able to say that they will be able to say their final goodbyes to their loved ones. This event is the result of the fact that the Defense Department of the United States is dedicated to bringing home the remains of all missing and unknown service members from America's wars. They have two locations, one in Oahu, Hawaii, and the other in Omaha, Nebraska. I think I'd be in Hawaii. Uh, Nebraska spends, uh, they spend countless hours working with DNA, dental records, x-rays, and personal effects to determine the identities of men and women listed as missing or unknown. As a result, just to quantify it a bit, since 2015, the remains of 1,200 Americans have been recovered in 45 different countries, and these remains have been identified. There, Another small statistic, the remains of 362 men who died on December 7th, 1941 on the battleship Omaha, Oklahoma, I mean, capsized in Pearl Harbor. These remains included the three Barber brothers who all died together, but was, whose remains were finally returned to the families. Besides the DPMOs, there are numerous civilian groups who seek to find the remains of missing Americans. One of these groups just located an American submarine in the last week that was sunk off the coast of the Philippines. Another group spends time and their own money diving on reefs like at Peleliu to find American planes that were shot down and recover those bodies to be returned. So I say to you, on this Memorial Day weekend, let us reflect on the wonders of this great democracy and remember the bravery and sacrifice required to protect it, because freedom isn't free. Thank you, Bill. And to all who have lost loved ones 
in service. We thank you for their service and for their lives. It is now that time when we get to bring our joys as well as our concerns to God and to one another in prayer. If you, oh, there it is. If you are worshiping with us this morning um, and you are here in the sanctuary, there are prayer cards that are in front of you on the back of the hymnal and or back of the pew in front of you. Um, there are prayer cards that you can use. Um, simply fill it out in the inside. If it is confidential, mark it as such. Um, and if it is public, then we will put the name of the person for whom we are to pray. Um, we won't put the situation in the intersections, our weekly newsletter. If you are online, the same thing. Um, simply put your prayer request in the chat and Meg will send that to us. If it is a confidential prayer request, simply send it as a direct message to Meg and she's our Zoom elder for today. Um, and she again will make sure that, um, that the elders and I get that prayer request. We have a couple of visitors with us today, so I wanna make sure that when we get to the end of the pastoral prayer, and I invite you to say the Lord's Prayer, say it in the words that are most familiar to you, um, the ones you grew up with, the ones that are in your memory, um, it's okay. Whatever version you have um, is fine. If you don't know it, it's written in your bulletin. So, um, so you could always refer to that as well. Will you join me in prayer? Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, we pray for your church in all of its many forms and all of its many manifestations. For our partner churches with whom we work, Concord United Methodist Church, Clayton Valley Presbyterian Church, and our own church, First Christian Church, we pray. We pray for those, those in our churches who are leaders and inspirers, those who are discerners and listeners, those who are learners and workers. Weave us together, O Holy Trinity, to strengthen our witness. We pray for those who lead communities, leaders of nations and leaders of states, those who lead cities and those who lead throughout our counties, those who we elect and those, those who elect and those who are elected. Call us together, O Holy One, to strengthen our solidarity. We pray for our own community, for those, for the people that we know and those who are strangers, for those who call the shots and those who feel powerless, for the young and energetic, for the old and wise, for the weak and needy, for all of us. Bring us together to serve one another. We pray for the suffering, for those who are sick, for those who are unhoused and alienated, for those who are stateless, for those seeking a livelihood far from home, for those who are grieving, for those who are afraid, especially today for the people of Israel, Gaza, and Ukraine. Hear us, O oh God, as we lift up those people and situations that are on our hearts and minds. Ashwatthama and Prema. Those who are traveling. Then.
spirit of unity, mystery of wholeness to your strength and to your love and to your insight. We offer our prayers. As we have lifted up our prayers to God, let us join in unison as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Again, using the words most familiar to you. Our creator who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It sounded a little like Pentecost in here. That was great. Are the kids going back? They're staying. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. I just, okay. Oh, can I ask them? Unless, oh. unless they want to. <laughs> They're going. Oh, okay. <laughs> Children, see you later. Bye. <laughs> or actually, they're Take not children. They're they're teenagers now, right? So, yes. okay, they're youth. The youths. All right. We now come in the time of our worship together. The opportunity to share our gifts. As the next song is played, if you would like to bring your gifts and your prayer cards and put them in the front basket, that would be good. All good things come from God, the giver of life. We are called as stewards of God's gifts to share in fulfillment of God's purpose for creation. As stewards of the kingdom of God, let us give from our abundance and let us give with thanksgiving. We fall down, we lay our prayer at the feet of Jesus. Bring his his mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy. Is the dedicate these gifts to you, O God. May they be useful to you in bringing your kingdom 
into full flower through the ministries of your church. We pray all of this in Christ's name. Amen. The scripture this morning is Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Am I off? Nope, nope, I'm good. Okay. Thank you, Emrys. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts, and the whole earth is full of God's glory. One of my fondest memories. Um, from when I was at Plymouth United Church of Christ in Detroit, is that every first Sunday, because, you know, in the UCC, we have communion once a month, and it's always on the first Sunday. And so every first Sunday, the processional hymn, as the choir entered and the deacons entered, it was a big procession, very fancy stuff. I, I miss that kind of pageantry of the church. But my favorite thing was listening to them as we all together sang, holy, holy, holy. And the song is so ingrained in me that it was sort of a little jarring when the words changed. I was like, oh, wait a minute. So then I had to start reading it because I know the song, but... I know a slightly less inclusive version, shall we say. Holy, holy, holy. On this Trinity Sunday, we don't do a lot with Trinity Sunday, and so I'm not going to do a whole lot of stuff explaining it, because frankly, it's not explainable. What we understand about, holy, about um, Trinity Sunday is that God is the creator of everything. We recognize that God in flesh is Christ when Christ was born, so Christmas. And we recognize that the Holy Spirit is that comforter, that, that advocate, that helper, that spirit of God that still moves across the face of the earth, that was present at creation, and that is present in our lives today that we celebrated last week at Pentecost. 
Trinity Sunday is that Sunday where we kind of put them all three together. There is creator, there is Christ, there is Holy Spirit. And that, that trinity of power, that trinity of love, that trinity of acceptance and fullness of grace guides our work from now, well, from now on, but liturgically from now until we get back to Advent, the beginning of the liturgical year. So now we start ordinary time right, which is the longest season um, liturgically. But what it is, and what I want you to remember most of all about Trinity Sunday is that we now have, we are now empowered by God in all of God's fullness to do what it is we are called and led to do. Next week, we will have our congregational meeting where we will affirm the new leaders and some returning leaders in our congregation. How often, and I'm sure those who were on the leadership recruitment committee this year will, will relate to this. So how often will we hear someone say, Will someone volunteer to fill in the blank? And you get crickets. Sometimes there's a quick response. Sure, I'll do that. I can, I can do that. I'm free. I can do that. But often there are crickets. It's just silence. Silence because maybe the, there's a feeling that the request is is something that's going to take more time or energy or skill than the person feels that they have. Silence because the task is just simply unpleasant. Silence because the request asks more of them than they are willing to offer back, than they are willing to share. Silence because maybe we're a little like Isaiah and we feel unworthy or ill-equipped to perform the required or requested task. There are lots of reasons that people say no. Sometimes, however, there are good reasons to say, here am I, send me. We are called and cleaned and committed so that we can say, here am I, Lord, send me. We are called during a trauma and political change and upheaval so that we can say, here I am, Lord. Isaiah's call to ministry begins with a death. King Uzziah has died. He has been the king over Judah for 40 years, and he's led Judah to its greatest level of peace and prosperity since the empire split following the death of Solomon. There is a war going on, and there's political power plays in the works that all have traumatic results. All of them. And Isaiah is called to be a prophet, speaking truth to power, speaking God's words to a traumatized and broken people at a time of great despair and uncertainty. Some would say we are experiencing that even now. Isaiah will be called upon to preach a word of hope, a word of truth, a word of harsh reality to a community of people who will read these words over and over again for many generations. The book of Isaiah is the longest book in the Bible. There's 66 chapters. And it was written by the prophet Isaiah and his followers. So I don't want you to think Isaiah lived for 200 plus years. 
because it started being the the his followers start he and his followers started writing at 700 BCE before the common era or what we used to call before Christ and that work ended at around 538 BCE you know time goes backwards before um, before we get to the common era Over the last few weeks, we have seen protests that have been in support of, Palest of the Palestinian people, protest in support of a ceasefire, and protest asking for colleges and universities to divest from Israel. It's a complicated matter. I'm not going to come down on one. I have my own opinions. I'm not going to come down on one side or the other because the issue is so complex. War is complex. The things that are happening in Gaza and Israel are complex. I have my own opinion. I will tell you when I'm not in a pulpit because um, there's a certain responsibility that goes with standing in this space. What I will say is that we need to pray about a, a solution that honors the dignity and the rights of everyone that I will say here. Every week, we hear more and more racially motivated violence. We hear about more and more racially motivated violence and politically motivated violence or hate speech. Our political lives these days are filled with questions and concerns, and our, and our sense of democracy is indeed at stake. We know that terror and violence and dis-ease are rampant. We know that violence is born out of hate. We know about violence that is born out of hatred. We know about violence and all that we are experiencing with, the, with attacks to our own faith and our own belief systems are traumatic. Trauma informs God's call, Isaiah's call. Well, God's call too. <laughs> Trauma informs Isaiah's call, and trauma informs our ministry as well. We are so far from the paradise that God created. Can you hear God? Can you hear God say, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Well, here we are, Lord, send us. The prophet's vision of a, whole, of, of a holy God breaking into the turmoil of this world offers us a stern warning. It's a stern warning to those who would do injustice. But it is also a word of hope for those who have been weighed down by the desperate geopolitical situation of their time and ours. In Isaiah's vision, God is shown to be sitting on a grand throne, attended by seraphs, singing, holy, 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 Lord is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with God's glory. God is portrayed as, the, as a vision of the eternal king, the eternal ruler, the Lord of hosts whose reign offers a sharp contrast to that kind of transient understanding of earthly kings and all of their wheeling and dealing. This is a vision that we have held on to even into these days. Evil and terror and trouble don't last always. Empires rise and empires fall, but God's reign is forever. And inspired by the reign of, or the vision of God's presence, the prophet remains faithful, faithful to his call, 
serving as a, as a channel for God's word amidst trying times. Second, we are, called, we are clean so that we can say, here I am, Lord. The prophet's admission in Isaiah 6, 5 is that he is unworthy. He feels unworthy or unclean, as is typical of trauma victims who engage in acts of self-blame to explain the travesty that is facing the people of Judah. He's putting all the blame on himself. We know too many people who feel that way about the things that are happening in their lives, that it's all their fault. Sometimes, yes, we may do things that create trauma, but most of the time, most of the time, it's a system that creates the trauma that we're facing. In solidarity with his, with his people's attempts to make sense of their trauma, the prophet exclaims, mourn for me, I am ruined. I am a person of unclean lips. Isaiah suggests that he is just not ritually prepared to stand in God's presence, nor are his people prepared to stand trial of a holy tribunal. Remember, back in these days, it was believed that if you saw God face to face, you were going to die. And so, so Isaiah is terrified that if he sees God, that first of all, he's not prepared to see God, but if he sees God, that he will surely die. A seraph, an angel in essence, touches his mouth with a hot coal and pronounces his guilt has been, has departed. His sin is atoned. He has been cleansed. He can speak freely. He can speak the way that he needs to so that people will hear and understand. Though Isaiah has expressed concern for his community, this atonement only applies to him. I may disagree with that a little bit, but that's okay. It's Isaiah's story, it's not mine. Atonement so easily obtained is something for us to think about. Because if God is so quick to forgive Isaiah from whatever it is Isaiah may have done or thought, God is that quick to love and forgive us as well. Whatever it is you think you might have done, that may be separating you from God. I am promising you, God has already let it go. We hold ourselves in some ways with a bigger barrier than God could ever create. God is ready to forgive us just as quickly as God has forgiven Isaiah. The prophet's tongue is loosened. His lips are purified so that he can speak. He is free and so are we. Now there are lots of ways to silence a person. Some, lots of ways just to prevent them from saying yes. Sometimes we erect those barriers, as I said a moment ago, attitudes or behaviors that ignore the voice of others or that ignore our own voice or that fail to consider their message. 
Sometimes we simply don't want to hear what they have to say. Sometimes we erect barriers that keep out alternative ideas or hamper challenging discourse from entering certain spaces. How many times have you been at a table and you've had an idea and you share it and then it gets ignored, but then somebody else says the same thing you just said. And they're like, oh, that's a great idea. Er. Silencing happens when individuals or groups are routinely dismissed and discounted. Have we listened to young people when they have expressed a desire to lead? Have we listened to our seasoned saints who have new and creative ideas about how to be engaged in mission and ministry? As we get ready for our annual meeting, as we get ready to, to celebrate pride, how do we silence our LGBTQ members, and friends, and siblings? How do we particularly silence our transgender siblings who become homeless or suicidal when they tell their truth? Do we listen to scientists who warn us about the condition of our planet and the ways in which we should be better stewards of our natural resources that God has already given to us? The water, the land, the plants, the animals, and the people. We create new and more distressing ways to silence one another almost every day. While we know that there are ways to silence each other, we, you and I, are invited to engage and to take the risk to listen and share. We too are claimed, and for, claimed or forgiven, loved into a new identity so that we can say, here I am, Lord. We can take the risk of saying yes. Despite the risk of suffering associated with prophetic calling, the prophet Isaiah nevertheless responds with these words, here am I, send me. And we are invited to do the same. Finally, we are committed to our call as disciples of Christ and we can say, here I am, Lord. For those of us listening to this call story now, we are mindful of the events of these past months and years, and we are doing our best to survive in a challenging world that seems to be becoming harsher and more dangerous by the day. The prophetic call story in Isaiah 6 may speak to us through new voices, calling upon contemporary prophets and ordinary believers to continue to proclaim the work, the words of justice and righteousness. We are not exempt from the pain and suffering that comes from speaking truth to power. The prophetic call story itself serves as a sign of hope because it shows how a prophet like Isaiah and his counterparts, Jeremiah and Ezekiel, fully immersed themselves in the evil of the moment and continued under difficult circumstances to speak words of judgment and hope that have the potential of saving those who hear these prophetic words from themselves and from their worst inclinations. We can hear this challenge and this invitation as we are called to speak for and with our siblings of color, our LGBTQ plus siblings, with women, with people living with disabilities, with the unhoused, and the list of those who are pushed to the margins of our society grows almost every day. Who knows what we might become when we answer the call to be God's prophets, 
when we are unsilenced, when we are free to be fully who we are called to be. Here we are, Lord. Send us. Amen. The doors of the church are open. If you have been worshiping with us, either here or online, and you would like to be a part of this congregation of God's people, please come forward as we sing together, Take My Life. If you would, if you could stand and sing together. If you are online and you'd like to unite with this congregation, simply type in the chat, um, uh, hashtag home, and Meg will let us know that you are interested in joining the church. If you've never been baptized and you'd like to begin that conversation, please come forward and let me know or see me after church. Same thing online, just put in hashtag Jesus and Meg will let us know. Take my life. Welcome home. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you
As we come to this time of communion, I invite those of you at home to choose elements to partake in this time of communion with us. And for those of you in the sanctuary, when you're invited to come forward and take the elements, please take them with you to your seat, and then we will take, partake of them all at the same time. I want to tell you about this farmer in Nebraska, not Texas, but Nebraska. He was a good farmer, but he was also a good woodworker. And when you visited in his home, his happy home filled with many wonderful children, you would always see beautiful pieces of his work. And one day someone came to his home and said, oh my, your dining room table, it's so beautiful and it's so big. And he just smiled and said, oh yes, every time we have a child, I add a leaf to the table. <laughs> And so I want, because I want them all to know that they are special, that they are invited to partake anytime we gather for a meal. And that's what I say to you today. You are special. You are invited to this table to share God's love, to remember that this table was set for you and for all. And all means all. And as we partake of this communion, we pause, first of all, to remember that it was that night in the upper room when Jesus met with his friends and he took a loaf of bread, a simple staple of life, and he blessed it and he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you. And in like manner, He blessed it. And he said, This is my covenant. This is my covenant as a symbol of God's grace poured out for you and for all people. As often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather as a community here at the table in our homes around the world to remember, to remember that you are always with us. And we hope that we can say sincerely from our hearts, here I am, Lord, take my life and help me to be what you need for me to be.
And your train fills the temple. The angels cry holy. The angels cry holy. The angels cry holy are you God. Let us eat and drink together. So, for those of you at home, um, we had this amazing trio of guys. So, we had Mark, who is back from being so very ill, and Mark is back home and playing. So, welcome back home. The power of prayer for sure, right? And Jacob and Brooke. So the powerful dudes. <laughs> I always wanted to do this. <laughs> it's good. You should do it. Okay. So we have announcements, announcements, announcements. So we're not going to do this anymore. So this is the probably I need to check with Lori and, and, uh, Andy, thank you. She's going to hurt me because I couldn't remember. <laughs> I need to check with I know, right? Right? I go away and I forget who I work with. Um, I need to check with Lori and Andy, but there has been some conversation um, that the announcements sort of detract from worship. So I'm thinking you all are literate people. You can read it in the intersections because you do that, right? You read the intersections every week, right? Okay. And they're printed in your bulletin. So unless something really special comes up that didn't make it in the intersections or the bulletin, maybe that's what we'll announce. What do you all think? Yeah? Yeah? All right. Unanimous. Okay. All right. Um, you also would have noticed something that I did differently today, and that is to say when we are eating and drinking because we got feedback that folks online, because the camera is focused on the band, they don't know when I say, when I lift up the elements, they don't know when to do it. So we'll just do it that way too. Okay. Yeah? Okay. All right. So here's what's happening this week. First of all, read your intersections. If you're, if you're not online and you're not getting the intersections and you need it mailed to you, let us know that. But otherwise, simply email Andy at andie at concordfcc.net and she will get you on that list or on the mailing list, whichever one you need. Also, if you want to check in with us across social media, do that. We're at at the at sign, concordfcc.net across all platforms, or at concordfcc across all platforms. Um, let's see. The other thing is tomorrow is Memorial Day. Thank you, Bill, again for that moving tribute. Um, and so the office is going to be closed. On Tuesday, the walking group is going to meet here at the church at 930 in the morning. Um, and at 7 that evening, are we still doing plant giving, Judy? Okay. So 7 in the evening on Tuesday, we will have a planned giving meeting on Zoom. Um, on, excuse me, on Wednesday um, at 7 p.m., we're still, where's Audrey? I lost Audrey. She just stepped out. She just stepped out. Okay. So I think we're still, those who are in the group, are we still gathering on Wednesday? All right, well, show up on Wednesday and we'll see. 
Um, and then on June 1st, this is really important. On June 1st, um, there is a Narcan training that will happen in the fellowship hall. Um, Renee, Reverend Renee Earl, part of our church here, um, and her ministry partner, um, Chaplain, Chaplain Becky, will be co-leading along with a, um, a professional person whose name I don't know at the moment, um, will be helping us to learn how to use Narcan, um, which will save people's lives, but also help us not to be afraid. Um, so if you can, that training is from 10 to one, it'll be in the fellowship hall, uh, lunch is included. Um, so be in touch with Renee, if you have not already registered and let her know you are coming. And then finally, next Sunday, um, immediately following worship will be our congregational meeting. It'll be here in the sanctuary and um, broadcast on Zoom. Hey, Leslie. Yeah. Uh, can I build on that plan giving Please. announcement? Um, <clears throat> we have that plan giving committee, committee that uh, determines the direction of funds that are donated to the church. And the committee's sort of tenure is coming to an end. And we're looking for new committee members to take part in that and uh, guide our pledges and our contributions to the church. So if anybody is interested in serving and being part of the plan giving committee, uh, please reach out to me and thank you very much. Amen. And just to be clear, the, the money that, he's that Brooke is talking about is money that has been left to the church after someone passes away. The, your regular offering, that's the budget committee and the finance committee. Um, so there's two different, I thought we got it all. <laughs> we got, <laughs> nah, <laughs> you got to pay us out of something. So, um, okay. Any other announcements for the good of the order? Yes, Bill. Okay. So tomorrow at three, tomorrow, which is Memorial Day at 3 p.m., we are asked to pause for just a moment of silence um, to remember those um, who have died in service. Thank you, Bill. Receive this benediction. Go forth having heard the call of the Holy One. Go forth loved and adored by the creator, redeemer, and companion, the Christ, the creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Go forth strengthened by the sender, the sent, and the spirit. Receive the gift of new birth and eternal life. Testify to these things and enter the kingdom of God. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. I'll have a great week. Yep. Thanks. <laughs>